Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? It's DJ Lunchbox. This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk about the WWE Network, but you knew that was going to happen. Uh, somebody tries to hijack the Mayhem Show. Are they successful? And I sing a song. Stick around. Get your indie fix at SorgatronMedia.com slash store. Get 20% off any digital downloads with the coupon code HEAD, including our latest release, IWC A New Era, featuring Al Snow and Luke Doc Gallows of TNA and WWE. Want to support the show directly? Donate as little as a dollar an episode to get your name in the show with more benefits on the way. Check out our page at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. My name is DJ Lunchbox, and this is, as I said earlier, the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Good work keeping up. Folks, this is the best podcast on the internet. Don't listen to anybody else. It is so. Uh, And it's not just me. It couldn't be just me. Of course not. That's ridiculous. We have a cast of characters this evening. Uh, A cast that would make Shakespeare jealous. Can you believe it? I can believe it. From all across this great nation of ours, or at least a couple states over, let's kick things off with Mad Mike! Woo! We're going to hijack this shit, motherfuckers! Hmm. Oh, hi, guys. It's Mad Mike. It's true. Mad Mike's from the Bronx. It is so. And, uh, okay, let's go back to domestic. Folks, right from here, I'm, I can't, Sorg, I keep seeing you doing stuff, and it's really distracting. I'm going to minimize that window. Okay. <laughs> from here, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or at least right on the outskirts, is the one and only. He's got two Zs in his name, and you don't know anybody who has that. Folks, it's Riz. I, I have to disagree with you, sir. Fuck your face, I, Riz. I, I, I never, uh, on I never, tough, no, what? No, 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 no. Let me finish. I also have a podcast on this very same network. What? It's pretty damn good. No, that doesn't sound right. Sir. Is that right? Boss battle, sir. It's coming for no, you. No, that, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't, no, that doesn't You, make you don't make any sense. Is that right? Sorg, is that right? Does he have one of those? Uh, that is accurate. Mad Mike is actually also being featured lately on the Rambling Movie Minute that airs at 5.30 p.m. on this network as well. I'm not going to yeah. say I'm Wow, more information show. than I asked for and from the leader of the Wrestling Nation show, ladies and gentlemen, the bearded god himself, Sorgatron. Hello, hello from Pittsburgh, PA in the Mayhem Studios, Control Center to the world. Uh, Mike Sorg here at Sorgatron. Uh, Pittsburgh, PA. Did I say that already? I don't remember. Uh, we're ready for mayhem. Apparently, there's some shenanigans happen on the Twitter, and people want to hijack the mayhem. Nope. But nope. we're God not going to let Sorg, You're that... not supposed to acknowledge it. Oh, I'm not supposed to acknowledge it? Jesus Christ. I'm not... fucking blew it right off the bat. No, go talk about it now. Go talk about it now. We're not going to WWE this shit at all, are we? No. We're not going to rise above it and make it our own. No. We're just going to give credence to the haters. Go ahead. Talk about them. Tell them. Tell them about the Chicago and assholes. We'll t- what? <laughs> well, well, we'll talk about Chicago assholes later. Uh, but this is, of course, is the Wrestling Mayhem Show at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Roku, Spreaker, all that kind of stuff. If you want to find us in video and audio forms, whatever is the easiest way to get us to your ears. Uh, also, thanks a lot to our intro there by Basic Sickness. Check out more from him at BasicSickness.com. Uh, you can also uh, drop us a line here at good times, good times. times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or drops line of 412-206-WMS0 for a voicemail. We actually got one of those later in the show as well, along with your emails and everything. And you can also drop us a line on Twitter at Mayhem Show, Facebook, good Google times. Plus. Good times. Did I miss my Wrestling Mayhem Show. Yes, you missed it, Riz. Thanks for coming back on the show. Um... <laughs> Jeez. Uh, and also, most of the conversation is happening at our Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, so please go uh, join that as well. There's been a ton of you guys joining lately. It's been really awesome to see all the new faces over there. Um, and also, uh, iTunes, please comment on our videos and our, our channels on YouTube, on iTunes, so you can help other people find us. And tell a friend. 
tell a friend about the mayhem. Um, and of course, you can join us live every Tuesday at live.sorgashawnmedia.com and at around 9 p.m. Eastern Time, followed at uh, 11 p.m. by the Indie Mayhem Show. Tonight, we're going to be talking to local female wrestler, going to be here in the studio, uh, Sarah Feeney. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for that with uh, somebody named Eamon. Uh, nobody cares. I haven't seen him for a while, but somebody named Eamon. No. From this no. show. Also, big Never thanks. Or you're just feeding into the hijack mayhem people who want you to push new talent. Oh, we want you're just a... feeding into their delusion, Sorg. Right, right, right. Um, and of Nobody course, we, we also have a Patreon where you, if you dig this content, and you want to uh, keep help us keep going with it, uh, help us get bigger and uh, add new stuff to it. Um, <laughs> go to Patreon.com/slash. Uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, that's P A T R E O N. And uh, or you can go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com and click the link there. Uh, big thanks to WrestlingRevolution.net, who's uh, chipped in their two bucks for it every episode. Uh, you can check them out at Twitter.com/slash The Wrestling Revolution or at WrestlingRevolution.net or .com. Uh, great uh, uh, news and message board that's been supporting us through the years so let's get started the only way we know how with the fan mail i'll start off here with one from dustin who's always been really good uh with those questions dear mayhemians wd 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 did perhaps the only thing possible to combat the hijacking of raw by hijacking hijacking the normal format of raw and flipping the script sucker um I believe you guys touched on this fact after, uh, with the after show, and I just wanted to agree with you. Uh, after show, you can check out. We do it on Google, uh, Google Hangout on Google Plus. Google Gangout. Uh, Google gang out. <laughs> right after Raw every uh, Monday night. Uh, you can check all those out on our YouTube channel. Um, uh, especially, the, it goes back to this. Especially the fact that they uh, overloaded the show with quality wrestling makes me wish they were. Uh, this threatened by every crowd in the WWE universe. I think we'll get into it. Uh, questions. Number one, uh, the signing of Drake Younger makes me happy uh, because I have followed him for so long, but left me scratching my head as to uh, where he would fit in uh, this stack development system. Do you think that WWE is overloaded in their current development system uh, to point to a point of uh, their detriment. I well, it's the first I heard about Drake Younger getting signed about um, that. And I, for those that don't know, I feel like Riz, you're going to be able to tell me who Drake Younger is. I have no idea. Oh, I thought because you chance CZW would know. No, he's a CZW C-Z-Dub, guy for one. CZW, CZW. Riz has um, never so, watched CZW. He just knows it is a thing to say. Oh, I, just, I see. I, 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 see. I, I just chant things. So. And I don't know much about him myself. I mean, I, well, other than I probably filmed two of his matches in IWC. Uh, but but there are, like, he, he seemed like... But... It's not like there's not CZW guys in WWE right now. No. Doing amazing fucking things. But it, but then again, I, you know, and there's not like there's not CZW guys at WWE right now that I saw when they passed through my town that didn't impress me a lick. Dean Ambrose, you know, and now look at him. Maybe it just wasn't mm-hmm. a good sampling of it because I didn't know anything about what they were about going into it. Um, I mean, you got you got Dean Ambrose, like you said, mm-hmm. Luke Harper, mm-hmm. uh Sammy Callahan when he's doing things in in uh, NXT right now. And Chachi is a big he, fan of it. <laughs> the <laughs> hacker gimmick is going to yeah. be amazing. That's that's already Especially. started. Uh, there was a there was a tweet that the NXT um, Twitter account sent out yep. that was all in binary. Yep. Mm-hmm. And here's the other thing. He, uh, NXT yeah. is now on sort of television, so roster depth sort is of. something they're going to want to cultivate. That's true. Yep. That's true. I mean, this this could be their true second brand if they keep this up in in a way that you know nothing else really was, even with the SmackDown Raw division. You know, um, it's something that can be a lesser brand but be a greater brand. Uh, you get the show off hungry people. I keep going to the the idea that hey, that NXT arrival show that happened Thursday was a big hey. Everybody step up your fucking game on the main, main roster because these guys will take your job in a heartbeat. Like I think there's very explicit messages being sent. And we saw sent there. that on Monday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We saw them. We so, saw Sheamus and and Christian do amazing shit. 
I mean, so that's yeah. the question too. I, is is Monday more of a a reaction to the hijacked Raw, or or is it a, a reaction to NXT arrival, or maybe it'd be perfect storm of both? I think I, I think it was more of a both. They found them all both. like they found themselves between a rock and a hard place, and they really had to step up and present something. Mm-hmm. It's not like they don't know how to do it. They just needed motivation. I, I love the ideas that people have been saying. I, I think I read this on Facebook. Forgive me if one of you guys said it too. Um, that you know, there's no Monday Night War. There's no competition. And you know, oh, like, I, like I said that in the hangout. Was that you yeah, said in the hangout? Said like I love that idea that like like the the crowd has become like you know like like Dustin's saying here. You wish that they were afraid of more crowds in the WWE universe, so they step up like this. But they can't yeah, keep the this crowd pace. is now their competition. Yeah, it, exactly, exactly. But, uh, but they the still have their money. Shouldn't though. be their competition. They already have their money. Yeah, yeah. So why is that competition when they? No, 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 have no. Stop! Lives? I was saying the crowd is their competition metaphorically. The crowd is the thing that's inspiring them to do good shows. I yes. didn't mean literally. Yes. Okay. Because I because do agree I don't think that. it's necessarily the crowd. They just it's the assholes in the crowd that try to make themselves seem more important than what than what's going on it's, in the show it's it's that one guy who took hijack uh chicago hijack raw and turned his back around while they were talking mm-hmm. the one guy mm-hmm. well and i think the scary part is it's not just smarks and you have like what happened in royal rumble you know, which caught them off guard. Maybe, but that maybe was there's a what that was that was very spontaneous. That, Again, totally another kind of perfect storm of a crowd that, as a whole, kind of expected one thing, got another thing that was their plan, um, and it kind of got away from them. I think, and I think the raw, if there was any reaction, and there's a we're going to take this by the horns with the hijacked raw it was we're not going to let that happen again and we're not going to let that happen intentionally plus they gave us a warning shot it's not and we know this is coming and they've had time to think about this and i think they they did a brilliant job and i want to hold right there because i know we're going to talk about this a lot more in the show and i want to get into the round table with that Mm -hmm. so uh, another question number two uh shield versus wyatt's round two was every bit as great (laughs) as expected while i would personally consider the match to be flawless could you see any potential flaws with having uh, the architect being the one who walked out on his team last night? Um, nah, wherever, no. uh, unless you're yes. some people who don't want them to break up at all and really want them <laughs> to sit in a timeout. Um, I, I think for the most part, no, it was great. It was a great telling a story. We know it's coming. They're trickling little bits and pieces. Seth, I don't think you really expected. Although they said something happened earlier I, in the show. Did I miss that? Well, he was going for a tag, mm-hmm. and nobody was there to tag him. Okay, so that's why he like got all pissy faced. <laughs> well, plus, uh, I, like, it's been a misdirect the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Like, at one point, you thought Roman Reigns was gonna turn on uh, the Shield. Next point, you thought Dean Ambrose was gonna turn. You've never would have guessed that Seth Rollins would have. I love, I, yeah, and I love He's that. I love that. Always been in the background. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. Hey, this the one trying to keep them together him. too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I th- I think it was great. I, I'm loving what they're doing with it. Um, you know, I'd be sad to see the team go, but you know, I think it's inevitable. You got three. You got three guys that are going to be stars. And it's going to happen sooner or later, and hopefully not too soon. Hopefully not too late. And I, I I'm enjoying them taking their time with it. To be honest, mm-hmm. it's also giving think... Seth Rollins more of an individual identity mm-hmm. because nope. you like when the Shield first came in, you knew who Dean Ambrose was right away. He was one who established himself as a talker, a little bit of a loose cannon. And then around like Survivor Series, that's when you brought in Roman Reigns. And you're like, holy shit, this guy is the powerhouse. This guy is the muscle. This guy beat Kane's elimination record in the Rumble. Mm -hmm. And now you know exactly who Seth Rollins is, or at least you will the next time he talks. He's more than just the flippy guy, right? Yeah, he's more than just like Justin Gabriel with longer hair. (laughs) LB, you had something? Um, I don't think they're going to break them up as soon as uh, as soon as they're hinting at because um, every time you've had the Wyatts uh, versus the Shield, all the finishes haven't exactly. I mean, there's been they're a little screwy, like uh, like Seth Rollins bailed or or um, 
uh, Dean Ambrose disappeared or something like that, even the singles match between Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns, that didn't end clean either. I think they're building to a, a big um, explosion between the two teams um, that will actually have like put the feud to bed completely. I could see him doing it at WrestleMania, but then you get the whole John Cena thing, and who knows what that's going to lead to. Mm-hmm. Um, next question, uh, and I have, first I have to stipulate before we go into it. Has anybody here watched TNA this past week? I, I know I didn't get to it. <laughs> I have. Okay, so you, this this question will be exclusively for you and Riz. Riz? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so this is for you guys. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll leave this up so we can get reactions. Uh, well, James Storm. I want to answer it too. Okay. James Storm. Based you'll off you'll of be the first. No knowledge. You'll be the first one then. Uh, James Storm delivered a great statement to end the parking lot brawl with Gunner. I'm sure that was a barn burner. After yeah. the security gate closed to separate the two, Storm told Gunner, the thing about your God is sooner or later, he'll cut you down. Wow. Uh, my question my question is, what statements come to mind when you think memorable wrestling quotes? Okay, I guess Wasn't it's more that a general. Wasn't Johnny Cash quote? That's a Johnny Cash song. I think yeah. it is a Johnny Cash song. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. Um, what? So, does anything stick out with you guys? Not that. Not, like, Not that. No. <laughs> I mean, it's very strong. I don't know the context of everything. I except mean, for... unless... Gunner's oh, God it. is like Joe Pesci or something. Okay. <laughs> what, uh, oh. what about you there, LB? Uh, you got uh, you got CM Punk versus The Rock, and he quotes the uh, famous play, and he says, your arms are too short to box with God. Oh, yes. Yes. That yes. Was that was amazing. Uh, oh, wow. that, I can't think I, of anything better than that. Because <laughs> I can't think of anything else right now, Paul, say something stupid. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, what was the Sid one? Oh, the one that made Bobby half... cry? No, it, no, not, not the rule of, <laughs> ruler of the world, world one. It's like, you, you're That's half the man that I am, and I have half the brains that you do. Or something similar to that. I don't think that's what we meant by that. Did, but... did Sid ask for a retake on that during live TV? No. Remember when, oh, it wasn't WCW. No, it wasn't WCW. Yeah, WCW. And he said something like that. And you can see just either Scott Hall or Kevin Nash, whoever was in the ring, just break up laughing. Uh, let me see. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow, I can't get, nothing really comes to mind. There's a famous Booker T line. And I'm we're gonna, not going to say that one. Uh, I'm going to get you, Ninja. Yes. <laughs> that is uncensored on the network, by the way. Really? What it is it is from? Uncensored on the network. What is it from? I forget, but I remember was seeing... Was it out of Bash of the Beach? I want to say it was like Bash of the Beach 95 or something like that. Oh, I'm going to have to look for that. It, it's it's somewhere uncensored on the network. Where, wherever it is, we'll, we'll find it. I, yeah, I'm sorry we can't come up with more quotes than that, but it, that's, that's a really good one. I, I, Wow. Um, close up the email here. Uh, that's for it for me, guys. With a week of wrestling like this, there isn't much for me to complain about. At least nothing that wouldn't make me feel like I am nitpicking things to death. Raw was enjoyable to say the least this week. I love that Impact has been uh, building to lockdown for some time, and I am excited to order it. Mm. ROH sure. and New Japan Wrestling announced some shows together. All in all, we uh, should all be happy to be wrestling fans this week. Uh, regards, Dustin. Um, with that, we we have uh, also... I mentioned a little teaser of uh, we're going to tell you why Chachi loves wrestling again. Um, it's not from the events of this weekend. I can, I can guarantee you that. Um, I, what? I have a, uh, an update. Okay. The infamous ninja remark was made <laughs> during Spring Stampede 1997. Wow, I'm gonna have to look wow. that up. Really? It was that late? Like I feel like I watched that then. Like that's <laughs> like I feel, wow, that's that's incredible. Um, anyways, uh, Chachi chimed in. He he has a few. Um, um, he he's been watching some old pay per views. Including today, uh, he, he's been finding fun signs and other items 
from uh, WWE Network over the last week, as I'm sure you guys are all discovering all kinds of stuff you didn't entirely remember. Uh, he gave us a couple from Armageddon 1999. Let me see if I can get... Uh, first of all, uh, do you smell what the, redneck are cook the rednecks are cooking? Was Somebody one fun song. Somebody Miss Kitty's boobs. <laughs> yeah. Another one he sent us was uh, Triple H Fears Turkey Jizz. Mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds, that just sounds it accurate. Does. Signs in the crowd that apparently it weren't doesn't. taken away quick enough. Uh, but this is the Attitude Era, so who knows. He, he sent us these ones before. One, um, <laughs> this one says, meet me, I think it says, meet me by the taco stand, or the nacho stand. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was from uh, Ladies Man. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. It's it's uh, invasion Lady, back in two thousand one, and then uh, this one is a uh, new stunned uh, Adrian Neville kid after he won <laughs> the NXT belt. Uh, so we'll 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 see about throwing those um, in. We'll we'll throw those somewhere so you guys can check them out, like on the Facebook or something. Uh, but if you have any like images, any fun stuff that you're finding like that on the network, please send them in. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com, um, or put it on the Facebook page at wrestling mayhem the wrestling mayhem show Facebook group. Um, and we'll be sure to share them around too. We'll, we'll have some fun with those. So um, now, who's got this next email? Oh, I'll read it. Okay, uh, you're reading the one from the old timer, right? Uh, hey, you know what? The Hijack Mayhem crew, the hijack, whoever's doing Hijack Mayhem said that this guy might show up tonight, and he apparently has. Okay, at least in email form. Yeah, in email form. So, I mean, you know, huh. for those of you who are doing Hijack Mayhem right now, just a little decorum, please. A little decorum. <laughs> the network is fan-fucking-tastic. Lame. Lame. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, okay. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I love going back and watching all the old stuff. NXT Arrival was also really good. Zayn Cesaro 4 alone was worth this month's network subscription cost. Having access to the past as well as the future stepping it up big time, I believe it will revolutionize the current product. This week's Raw appeared to indicate this. Unless they are just firing all cylinders in an attempt to fight the hijacking... But the show from beginning to end was pretty solid. The only thing missing was some bad news. Uh, although, I'm going to stop right here. Bad News Barrett tweeted during Raw, and he said uh, something to the effect of, I'm sorry I didn't come out tonight. I just looked all throughout Chicago and couldn't find any bad news worth reporting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was pretty great. Uh, all right, back to email. In case people hadn't figured it out, I completely made up having to pay for NXT. Sorry to anyone who believed it. Actually, no, I'm not sorry. And if I see another pointless complaint about the network, I will snap. My fingers are tired from typing on my phone, so I end this. If anyone thinks Punk will be back anytime soon, I've got some bad news. Copyright Mark Madden. Remedy out. Doc Remedy. Doc, wow. Wrestling Mayhem Show original chiming in there. Good to good to see that he's still alive out there. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, actually, he's been popping up on the uh, now, Facebook group. Now, is that Doc Remedy or the Doc Remedy that killed the original Doc Remedy? I'm not sure anymore, honestly. <laughs> I, I can't keep track. I'm going to Doc can't. Remedy came back from the dead. Because I thought the original killed... Doc Remedy was Jim Helwig, but now I think he just goes by Remedy. Oh. Remedy, Remedy. Mm. Yeah, remedy, remedy. That's what remedy, I thought. Remedy, All right. Remedy. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, LB, I think you got the next one, right? I do. I do, Sorg. And I tell you, I want to do something a little different. Okay. What? 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 Hey. 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 It's me. It's me. It's the future and past fan of the year at Big Peace PC. Holy Chicago, Monday Night Raw, being from Illinois, as I am. I really wish that CM Punk would have returned last night, but shit happens. Daniel Bryan and Triple H feud seems to be 
building well. Would still rather see Brian inside old picture, but maybe that'll happen too. Shield versus White was good. I would like to see some of these tag teams stick together a little longer. But maybe they will all work out good in the end. I like the real Americans a lot. They're a great tag team. I like to see Cesaro do well on his own, but would like to see them as a tag team still for a while. Hopefully. We the people, Wyatt family, still booked strong and will be cool to see Cena in a match against the clear cut heel. Whether Bray is cheered by Cena haters or not, will make for awesome WrestleMania moment and great, great match. I suggested a tag team turmoil match as a mid-card filler for Mania. But with all the tag team breaking up, will I have enough to fill this card? For those who watch NXT Arrival or NXT in general, who would you like to see the night after WrestleMania on Raw? Paige, Sami Zayn. Adrian Neville, happy network watching and live main event tonight. Woo! Till next time, it's been me. It's been me. It's at Big PPC sent from my iPhone. Bravo! 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 Encore! Encore! Uh, no, no, no encore. But uh, encore. Uh, uh, we had again. some, we had some reactions. Uh, uh, Kelly Kyle says, "Change the stream, change the stream." Uh, Big PPC, the musical. Uh, you are burying Big PPC. Must be uh, some of those hijackers. And uh, uh, t- show title: WMS, the musical. Uh, my ears are bleeding. This is so bad. My stream keeps freezing up. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so the reviews oh, are in, LB. Let's ignore them and answer some questions. What Alex, was the first uh, one? Don't worry about the stream freezing. We will send eighteen thousand emails to let you know that we're working on the problem. Can I, wait, wait. Can I, can I point out? Side note: I received an email during the last podcast that they're sending everybody that was having problems a five dollar credit on the WWE shop. Yep. Nice. Yeah. So, so although there you that go. coupon code looks like it's for Xbox. For what? That coupon code looks like you have to cash it in on an Xbox. Mm. Could be. Anyways, um, yeah. Uh, there were some questions see, in the uh, big from NXT the next night after WrestleMania on Raw. I don't want to see Mojo Raleigh. Fuck that guy. I, I don't, who, who would you see? Is, um, is he is he the white guy with the dreadlocks? No, 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 no. no, 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 no he's no, the no, guy no. who stays hyped. Yeah. Oh. He, he doesn't, he doesn't get he hype. He stays, stays hype. hype. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, no, he's fine. Fuck that white guy with dreadlocks, though. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of. <laughs> I yeah, wouldn't mind hippie. seeing. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing a Tyler Breeze if he's not there yet. I definitely wouldn't mind seeing Sami Zayn. Um, no, Sami Zayn. I want to see Zane? Paige yeah. challenge AJ. That would be fun. That Divas be fun. title versus NXT Divas title. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I, I want to see Bo Dallas as a new member of the Wyatt family. Oh no! Believe, believe, no, believe in the shield. A member of the shield, sir. Ooh, no. there you go. Believe in the shield. shield. There you go. Believe in the shield. Believe in the shield. Uh, but John for me, Cena, the shield. Since you guys took all my favorites, <laughs> um, fuck it, Sami Zayn. I I want to see Sami Zayn in any capacity in Certainly. NXT. Certainly. What if um if the real Americans break up, um, <laughs> Sami Zayn joins the real joins Jack Swagger as a Canadian hero turned American traitor. <laughs> Wait, didn't they do that with Law Resistance? Yeah. So. Uh, okay. It, it, it has been this seven is, years. This is wrestling. They'll use things over and over. That's true. Hey, it's That's been true. a while since Law Resistance. 
it's been more than seven years, so it's it's. I was going to say, what was the limit we imposed? The limit is being posed. Pose, respect the limit. Respect the oh. limit. Oh, leave in the shield. All right. Uh, leave with, in the pose. With that, was there another question? I can't remember. Um, yeah, PPC also asks, who will induct Paul Bear? Will it be the Undertaker or Kane? I hope it's Undertaker. Undertaker. Yeah. Um, really hope it's Undertaker. Really hope kayfabe, anything like that. He, he has no, to. He really I, has to. He's going to do Undertaker's it. Undertaker's going to be, you know, I think Undertaker and Kane are going to talk. But the one to induct him is probably going to be his son. Well, no, he, the son would be accepting, I would imagine. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, for induction, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, like be... who introduces them before him? I can see that. Okay. Okay. I can see breaking kayfabe for that. Yeah, I think you have to. Um, another one that was kind of tossed to us from the Facebook I had to point out, uh, a sign from, I think this is last night on Raw, Riz, no, you yes. didn't put this, who put this? What? Riz, you posted this, I think. What did I post? AJ's thirsty for Dickens Cider. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Dickens really? Do we... Cider. Dickens Cider. This made it on the TV. Yeah. Dickens Cider. There you go. Uh, sorry, I wanted to loot that in with the other sign from before. So, <laughs> little out of context. Did you, did you get it? I get it. it I get it. it. It's sexual. Uh, we have some other talk for about Raw, about WB Network, of course. But I want to bring in the rest of the crazy mayhem, crazy guys, the mayhem uh, <laughs> roundtable cool. here yeah, in the yeah. second half. Uh, so we're gonna leave uh, this section with a voicemail by Boo Diggity. Is that accurate? Ooh, yeah. Here we go. I've heard them. I've heard them. I hear them from afar. They reach my ears deep here in the south. I hear your whoos deep in my body. I'm sorry that I've been gone for a minute, kids. I'm sorry. Been busy. I keep, I keep asking, if you watch the Raw wrap-ups, you keep seeing me ask, Sorg, can I be on the show? And Sorg's like, not answering that. <laughs> what? I could be on what? during the the big gang hour time. But I think Bo, I think Bo Diggity deserves, to, deserves a host slot. No, I'm not going to hijack the Mayhem show because I'm not an idiot from Chicago. So all I want to try and figure out here is how do, how do I get on the show? How do I get on the show for a full time period to really let my really let it out? You ask, know, ask the question. Let the people feel my strength. You know, with an F at the end. Strong. I don't know how to do it. Mayhem Nation, nay region, nay source basement. Tell me how I do this. <laughs> That's really all I want to do. Siri's trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm heading north. Yeah. That's not Soon. Siri. That's Carl Johansson. Soon. Soon. Don't, don't, Enjoy don't ignore thoughts? Siri. Sure. Here that's you go. How I got her. Raw was super awesome. Dear people in Chicago and Green Bay, sit down, shut the fuck up, and just enjoy this shit. Okay. CM Punk isn't coming back. Nope. Just ever. Just, just assume CM Punk isn't coming back. That way, when he does, your pants will blow right off of your body. Yeah. CM Punk is coming back. It, it, Paul Heyman giving a master's class in how to cut a heel promo properly. Yep. Uh -huh. Triple H and Stephanie McMahon forever. Just forever. Let them... Vince, it's cool. Have a seat. <laughs> Let Triple H and Stephanie get after this. Because nothing was better than Daniel Bryan going, "This isn't your ring," and Stephanie going, "But, but, but it is. This is this is our ring. This is this is ours." This, that was we awesome. pay for this ring. Man, it has been a minute since I've done one of these. Whew. Hi. It's been a couple I mean, minutes since you started too. <laughs> it, it's it's All like right. a Batista well, match. I suppose the Bojangle sign is calling me. So uh, this has been Bo fucking diggity. Bo F diggity. The F is for fuck. Get me on this fucking show. I call upon you. Help me. Get on the Mayhem show. Woo! Well, there you go. Um, yeah, ask. And yeah. Yeah. That's all it is. I don't man. know. Dude, you're I, in the I loop. like to hear from you. You're, you're in the loop. You know, you're, it's cool. 
I know I'm a little tired on Monday nights, but it's cool. It's cool. But diggity. It's all right. You can come back on the show. Just say. But diggity. Like, what's up, bro? I got time. Say, but what's diggity. up, bro? I got a slot. You know. Put Mad Mike on mute. That's fine. No, no. I've heard from a lot of inside sources that you're holding people down. Am I holding people down? You're that's burying what, That's what I've heard. Sword. I don't. You're burying Bobby. How dare you? Bobby, no. Bobby, why, why are you burying Bobby? Bobby. Don't bury Bobby. Bobby said he was getting a rope, Sorg. That's what you were doing <laughs> yes, to the Sorg. younger talent. What? That, listen, I, you can't I, I blame me Alex for his, his apparent psychological been. problems, okay? Um, and Eamon, Eamon used to be the host, one of the hosts of the show. Where's he been? Matt Carlin said AJ is gas. <sighs> <laughs> this is our show, Sorg. This is the fans' show. Of course, we got a second uh, voicemail here from Matt Carlin's using the hotline. Let's see what our friend in the mainstream media has to say. Hey, Mayhemers. It's your buddy Matt, mainstream Hi. media. Um, I just had to make sure I get this comment in since I'm not so sure if I'm going to be able to make it later on tonight. Um, first of all, I'm living in a house full of broken morale and bruised <laughs> egos. Of course, you all know my precious wife is heartbroken over the events of last night involving the, her precious shield. Yeah. But I told her there is a way out of this. I could see the light. I know how this is going to play out. And I think you guys might agree with me. What if they do Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose teaming up against the Usos for the tag titles at WrestleMania and it make up or break up? with Seth Rollins in a neutral corner like Miss Elizabeth. I think it's a good idea. All right, other point. Um, in a cage. To address the rumors, yes, it is true. Last night's Raw made my four-year-old cry. Um, he watched it on the DVR earlier today. He heard oh. CM Punk's music. CM Punk did not come out. And yes, he cried real tears because CM Punk was nowhere to be found in Chicago last night. Um, my question for all of you is this. Who is to blame? Who should be held responsible for the tears of my youngest child? Is it Paul Heyman? Is it WWE? Or is it CM Punk? Hmm. Answer me that, and uh, I'll hang up and listen later on. Wow, who is blamed for his child crying last night? CM Punk, that uh -huh. empty villain. Mm-hmm. I what? think the it sound is. guy. The sound guy. <laughs> What's that, Mike? The, I'm going to say Michael Cole. Michael Cole. <laughs> Why Michael Cole? Because he doesn't get enough blame for a lot of things. <laughs> it's been a while. It has been Just a while. Roberts he took, had something he took to do with the heat this. for a long time. Then. He did. He did. You know. You know. I really kind of take it back to CM Punk because I think in this whole situation, it is. It is. CM it Punk's is CM fault. Punk's fault. Oh, it, now, absolutely, it absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, Cole. I don't care what's going on in WWE. I mean, that something really, really, really shitty is going on that we don't know about and we'll never know about. I, he walked out on his contract, guys. That's messed up. He didn't get fired. No, he he didn't. He he didn't like get told to leave. No. He, he just left. He left, and, and he left. also deprived he... us from seeing him on at midnight, which I was looking very much forward. To. <laughs> and that's the real issue here, and that's why Matt yeah, Mike I cried. Was, I thought he's on. Next, that like, is why I cried ago, tears of sadness last week. Yes, exactly. I mm -hmm. wanted to see CM Punk win the internet, and instead, he lost my heart. And uh, the people show will continue with some remember one. In the meantime, let's take a look at. Uh, Let's take a look at uh, uh, IWC's A New uh, Era. I saw a little little bit of clips at the beginning of the show along with that coupon code this week. Um, go check that out and use that coupon code go for uh, uh, so a little bit of percentage off, you know, a little bit of discount. Help you out there with the digital downloads. Uh, IWC A New Era uh, featuring, of course, Al Snow and uh, Luke Gallows, uh, formerly Doc of the Aces and Eights in TNA, uh, formerly Festus, formerly yes. part of the... Straight Society. He's done a lot of stuff in the wrestling business. And he's on this DVD. Uh, here's a little preview. A little bit of music for Basic Sickness. We'll be right back with Remember When.
Hey guys, welcome back. And of course, check out that DVD and uh, so much more at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. And make sure you use that discount code from the beginning of this show uh, so you can get a little bit of discount on that and anything else you want to pick up there. Uh, now is the time where we like to flashback a little bit, where we like to remember uh, hey, things. Hey, wait, what, what, hold on. What, what's up? Uh, what's up? Eamon? Eamon, what the mm -hmm. fuck are you doing here? Oh, hey. Wait, wait. Yeah, I, I, I just well, want to get some food. You know, I, I kind of left for a little while. I didn't think you, you didn't think you guys would need me. You know, I didn't think they are. You know, you you would be fine. You know, the, the I didn't think you know the fans would miss me or anything or, or you know, get an uproar or anything. I mean, you know, but uh, yeah, just got some food and I'm back. Uh, what I miss? What? How many? Miss anything? How long have you been gone? Oh, just I don't know, like a few months or so. Few, few months or so. Oh. It, it, it took you that long to get food? Yeah, it, it was real busy. Much? It was. I, I didn't think it would you matter. I mean, New York really, again and know? didn't tell me. I, I you know, everything's going so well, and you know, were you, were you and, in the back and, and, you know, we're, we're delivering some high quality content. You, I didn't think you know did you me find leaving a, would mess any of that up. You know, did you? Did you, you know? And did you find a WWE merch stand on your way? I, I may have. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that's what I saw. There were some. Um, there's stuff, some stuff over there. I don't think I didn't, I didn't see any Russell fan T-shirts though. Well, there aren't any. Which kind of perturbs but, me. Uh, so. Oh, oh. Um, so I'm, you know, is, wait, is there um, um, I don't have a ball. Um, what? But I think I'm gonna take it and go home. But aren't so, you? See you guys but, whenever. But, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, aren't, wait aren't you? Wait, 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 wait. Aren't you? Wait, aren't you, aren't you like know. typically broadcasting from home like the rest of us? <laughs> Yeah, um, I didn't really think that part through. <laughs> and and shouldn't you? I mean, I don't know this personally, but shouldn't you technically have two balls? <laughs> uh... And scene. <laughs> 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 so that was interesting <laughs> so that'll be a remember when one day so let's instead do the real remember when ooh, 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 music time remember when this is longer than a vine Ugh, Jesus. Uh, remember when? Ba, 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 remember when? Ba, 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 remember when? Ladies and gentlemen, remember when? This week, of course, you have a lot going on. With uh, I blew my singing water earlier. I'm sorry. <laughs> Problems with the authority on uh, WWE oh, last sure. night. Uh, man, Mike came up with this a great idea. What about thinking back to other people? having problems and disrespecting authority in some way. Mike, this is yours. Do you have one off the top of your head? Uh this wasn't mine. I just I just read what was in the notes. But um oh, oh. <laughs> yeah it was mine. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I believe it was L V. You're the one that brought it to my attention when nobody else did. Well I I read things from time to time. I follow the show notes. <laughs> um let's see. I, I don't have one right now, Sword. I'll come back. Okay. Yeah, I think about that. I did bring up with it. How about you, LB? Uh, well, I thought that would take a little bit longer. So I was trying to find the date of something, but I can't. So let's say 1991. The place. WWF. The medium. Comic books. Oh. Virgil has had enough. Oh, what? 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 <laughs> I already hate this now. <laughs> Fuck your face, Riz. Fuck your face. That's the title of Fuck this week's you episode. Bring up Fuck Virgil. Your face, Riz. No. No. Virgil has had enough. Ted it's DiBiase so t attacks him for the last and final time. And where does this take place? In Ted DiBiase's palatial mansion, deep in South Florida. Virgil attacks him in his uh, uh, workout room, throwing weights that should cripple people. Ted DiBiase is relatively unfazed. He fends off his manslave Virgil and goes to dive in his money, ducktail style. Not physics style, because that's not possible, but ducktail style. What happens? Virgil pursues him, of course, because it's the same fucking house, and he's just angry. <laughs> they fight. Somehow they end up on a balcony. Someone gets thrown off the balcony into a pool. And at the end of the comic, Virgil is put back in his place. 
and returns as Ted DiBiase's manslave. Oh, this is a comic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought this was like a segment from WWE like, minute, that I missed. <laughs> no, I said I said it at the beginning that it was from the comics. Yeah. Okay. That's my oh, favorite. God. I've never seen anything in wrestling to equal that. <laughs> All right. All Sorg, right. Sorg? Wow. No. Uh, my favorite. I mean, it's kind of the the standard one. My favorite is that the, actually you can get multiple from us. Um, but my favorite was the time that uh, Stone Cold made Vince piss himself. <laughs> oh, yeah. ah, that's a good one because uh, I remember I was kind of wavering back to WWF at the time and that was a is this real kind of night <laughs> um, was, was kind of my thoughts uh, going into was that, that the gun? was that the gun sword that helped yes. the gun with the bang yes McMahon 316 says I just pissed my pants yeah yeah. Gee, Sorg, I wonder what you were watching this weekend. <laughs> what? <laughs> the Stone Cold. No, I wasn't. Well, I, I did watch a little bit last night. Um, after we did our, our show, I just left the stream on, and they had the Stone Cold thing a little bit. So, but yeah, it kind of makes you think about that a little bit. Um, plus, they got the uh, the uh, Zamboni episode, or or was it the beer truck uh, episode? Well, he Raw, did both. Commander. He did. Yes, he did yeah. both. But I mean, they had one of the episodes on Best of Raw. Uh, this week as well. So, um, Mike, you come up with anything yet? Yes, I did. Um, back when we had the alliance, very takers. Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. I, think you did. I love the reaction when anyone gets their stake. Go ahead. Um, when Kurt Angle. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> when Kurt Angle comes out with the milk truck. And spraying uh, the entire alliance with milk, and Jr. uttered the classic line: "The billion-dollar princess has become a dairy queen." <laughs> <laughs> classic. Thank you so much, Mike. I have to look up something else. Me too. All right, how about Matt Carlin's? Maybe he he didn't just have his taken. <laughs> All right, Sorg, you helped me out. You, you jogged my memory by taking me back to the Austin era. I remember. You guys might have to help me fill in the gaps. I remember an awesome moment where Shane McMahon showed up to his father, Vin, and I believe he stood side by side with Steve Austin. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and he ever was enough for him. And it was, I mean, like his voice was a really heartfelt promo. And I think it was like a month later in the Survivor Series where he ended up Screwing over Stone Cold. Yeah. Oh, oh, you didn't take mine. Can I go? Can I go? <laughs> okay, okay, Bobby, 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 go ahead, go ahead. When Shane McMahon bought WCW. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Guys, a round of applause for Bobby for getting his in there. Oh, no, Congratulations. Oh, so Thanks. much, Bobby. Congratulations. Oh, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank hey, man, do you uh, have one? Uh, I don't have a particular one. As you know, I'm very oh, young. I, I don't have so my remember fun. box. I, I however, <laughs> uh, actually just got done listening to a uh, an episode of the Opie and Anthony uh, show that had Jr. on it, um, which is a very good listen. Uh, but I, one of the things he would mention is that at times when he was on commentary, and of course, for those that don't know, uh, when you're on commentary in the WWE, usually Vince McMahon is uh, in your ear from the gorilla position telling you things to say. Um, and he position. recalls of a time where he basically, um, like Vince had something in mind for him to say, and Mike, and JR would not say it to the point where Vince continually was like yelling into his ear, ear angrily to say it. <laughs> um, and once they had gone to commercial break, uh, Vince chimes in on JR's uh, headset uh, and asks, um, did you say that thing I was supposed to say? He said, no, sir. He said, Good, because it was stupid anyways. <laughs> so, you know what? If you don't listen to your boss sometimes, sometimes it pays off. So there you go. There's a uh, real life. You know. I actually got another one. Okay. I actually got one that uh, Bobby didn't steal. It. Fucker. Um, <laughs> I had to get actually it in. From yeah, Bobby. Cloth. That's yeah, Bobby. Actually, <laughs> it's actually from the same cloth as the Alliance thing. Uh the whole Shane McMahon versus Vince McMahon match mm -hmm. matches mm -hmm. series of matches, which showed, you know, Shane McMahon putting a garbage can over his father's head, climbing on the other side of the rope of the ring, 
and uh, just drop kicking the shit out of his dad's head off the top rope. That was solid. It was it, 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 I I actually watched that during the first week of uh, the WWE Network, and it still is awesome. Nice. Another good instance from that same match is when Linda McMahon rose from her wheelchair. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like and another good incident, it's, uh, instance from that match is when Strish Stratus um, um, goes after Stephanie. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. It was all around goodness. There was a lot of authority. Uh, there was, yeah, there's a lot of happening. Um, uh, Wheels, how about you? Yes. Uh, honestly... On any of the Stone Cold moments, but honestly, I'll admit I was watching the Stone Cold thing over the weekend and last night because it was just that much entertainment. But my most favorite moment was the Vince in the hospital and just <laughs> Stone Cold just oh, whacking him with that damn bedpan. And I laugh every time I see it. It's just, it's great. And it then he the shoves that damn, the, the damn whatever the catheter up his ass and I lost it. I'm like, see, this is great authority of just whipping your own boss. Awesome. Mm. Awesome. Did I miss anybody? Did we miss anybody? No, 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 no we're good. We're good. I don't we There's plenty of people here. I have to, like shuffle them. Um, what? Chat room. Chad room? I, they, they haven't chimed in yet. Oh, no, Alex Carr's heard Virgil, and then he left. <laughs> yeah, see, that's, <laughs> so fuck you, lunchbox. There you go. Um, hey, so if you to be fair, when Virgil, Virgil actually went against Ted DiBiase, that was pretty good too. Yeah, yeah, for the moment, I guess. So, <laughs> but it's Virgil. I, I've done a little research, um, and apparently these comics were called WWF Battle Mania, mm. and they were. They were uh, launched by Steve Ditko under the Valiant uh, Valiant uh, Company. Holy wow! Shit. Yeah, I just sent an email to Good Times with uh, Good Times. Quick little, Good quick times. little bit of business about uh, Good Times about Battle Mania. Hey, and that that's the same company that did like like they had like the Nintendo stuff too, like Captain N and all that kind of stuff. I think I think you're right. Thank Probably. You're right. Uh, that sounds bad. Wow, we just got a major comment on our YouTube video from last night about High Check Raw. They are not happy about oh, it. Um, gentlemen, gentlemen, about, gentlemen, about it or about us? But we'll get we'll get gentlemen. into that in a moment. First, can I say something real quick? Sure, Steve Bobby. Ditko. Sure, Bobby. Sure, Bobby. Steve, Dick, Steve Ditko is from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Oh wow! Yeah. Hey. <sighs> Jim Shooter was from Pittsburgh. Ladies and gentlemen, nice. we want you to hijack some Antonio. awesome t-shirts here, uh, <laughs> courtesy of our friends at ProWrestlingTees.com. Uh, we, of course, we talked about the the Patreon, but if you don't want something, uh, you know that that you know, you know re you know re ups every week or anything like that, like that, uh, you can just go buy t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. Uh, what, uh, including the good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Good times. Uh, good times. <laughs> that one in the awesome uh, Fast good Times Original Mountain High kind of font action there. Just go to prowrestlingtees.com slash WMS to get that kind of stuff. And while you're there, you can support uh, other indie wrestlers like Friends of the Show, like Zima Ion, like Johnny Gargano, like Facade, I believe is on there as well. Um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, just go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Throw them in the cart alongside the stuff to support this show. Pro Wrestling Tees. Thanks a lot. ProWrestlingTees.com. Something for your back. Um, so And your front. I wanted to start this front. one with actually a comment from the Facebook uh, in regards to last night's Raw. Uh, our friend Sharman actually Hi, responded on there. Sherman. He says, so basically yeah, last man. night I saw a great promo from Paul Heyman. We alluded to that earlier. Uh, yes. Several table spots, more suicide dives than an ECW pay-per-view. A female yes. wrestler put someone in a modified tarantula and made her opponent tap out to an Indian death lock. And there's which, discussion. Which, which Wait, was corrected that it was a Muda lock. It was a Muda lock, yes. He was working. Right. He, he was trying to rack his brain for that. I, 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 I don't blame him. It's fine. Uh, a segment with Brian and Triple H for which the heat in the building was thermonuclear. Dean Ambrose used a bridge figure four, which is fucking amazing. 
other stuff. Um, I want to point out most of that stuff he points out there was the first hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, this raw last night, guys. One, do, do you think that? I mean, we all agree that we it was a good night of raw. Yeah. Do yeah. you think yes. last night's raw was a direct? Uh, uh, result of hashtag hijack raw. Nope. Fuck no. you, Chicago crowd. <laughs> you guys are the reason the people hate the internet. Um, no, fuck that. No, fuck that. The, a lot of good stuff that was listed on there by Shireman is stuff that's been happening constantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. If they and the worst part, I I sent out a. I posted in the Facebook group a a tweet from the at Chicago Raw crowd. Um, and I'm going to try to pull it up, but it's this whole thing in this whole like movement of like the CM Punk, like, Oh, he's leaving and, and we're upset about it or whatever. Or, like, Oh, Daniel Bryan's being buried to me. It all comes from a point of selfishness. Mm -hmm. It is a, I think a major selfishness from the crowd because it's not a direct, it's not a viewpoint of this is what's happening in the WWE. It's uh, it's based off of, we don't, what we, we want isn't happening. And I, I hate to toot our own horn. Toot, toot. But, but they wanted to be the Royal Rumble crowd. Yes. And they wanted to be – they also they wanted, wanted to be the Money in the Bank crowd. The, no, they, wanted, they to wanted to be the Royal Rumble this is, crowed, this is crowd. This is why that we can blame it all on Mad Mike be because they all wanted to be the post-WrestleMania crowd. They did. I'm sorry. They wanted to be every crowd that was organic and that uh, saw something mm -hmm. and was, you know, vehemently against it. And I will the say, the, the reason I... They never saw a Royal Rumble crowd coming, but they could see the Chicago crowd coming from mm -hmm. a month away, and they were mm -hmm. ready, and they fired away with a front-loaded show that basically let the crowd punch themselves out. They effectively rope a the crowd to the mm -hmm. point where the show they're willing to go along with whatever they wanted to feed them yep entirely it was but the, the reason i liked the reason i enjoyed the royal rumble crowd and or the money in the bank crowd or, or you know it's for example let's use the example of the rumble crowd everything i think kicked into gear at the point of that john cena randy orton match which i've said this before if you look at that match it is objectively terrible mm. Taking out all like bias out of that match, it is an objectively terrible like, match, and I feel like the crowd the had every right to shit on it because it was a just a terrible match. I, this I is a this planned. Though. This is a planned sort of ideal or a planned uh, a, a plan uh, just to ruin the show. No matter what's going to happen, not based off of what's going to happen on the actual show, it's telling people. We are going to ruin this show because we want certain things to happen. Yeah. But and I'm sorry. Here. It is not your obligation as a fan to do that. You are not uh, given that right as a wrestling fan. And, and they're demanding also, something they that WWE may not be able to give them, no matter what they want to do. There may be nothing they can do to bring back CM Punk at this point. But the mm -hmm. fans are going to stand there and demand well, actually, it. Actually like, – to be fair, in Chicago, in Chicago, there is something they can do. They can find where he lives, stand <laughs> outside his house, and go, we want punk. We want punk. Because the only person keeping CM Punk from being on Raw is CM Punk. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another another big difference between the crowd from last night and, and Eamon, this supports what you were saying. The crowd from last night versus all those other crowds that we mentioned, including us here in Pittsburgh, was that we were having fun. We yeah. were enjoying the show. The things that we were chanting for, even that post WrestleMania crowd, they were fandangoing before that was a thing. Um, you know, they were really enjoying the show and 
more organically reacting to what was happening. Whereas the Chicago crowd, like you said, came into it saying, we're going to shit on this no matter what happens. Right. And it comes from a point of selfishness. It's not if they looked at the actual punk scenario, they would realize it shouldn't be directed at fucking WWE. It should be directed at CM Punk. And if you want to look at it from either perspective of whether you think it's a work or whether you think it's a shoot or whatever, there's two ways it goes. Either it's a work and he's going to come back. So guess what, guys? He's going to come back. You know, or it's a shoot and Punk left you guys. Like, Punk left. Those are their two scenarios, neither of which necessitates them doing that. And it's even a selfishness in the sense of Brian. Like, we want Brian to be WWE champion and to main event WrestleMania, and, and but we don't want him in the match with Triple H, you know, that's getting high profile spots on Raw and, you know, putting him in the main events all the time. No, well, we want him in the but, WWE Championship match, and we want him to beat to Randy be Orton and Batista to be WWE Champion. That's from a point of selfishness, because if they take themselves out of it and they look at it prospectively, Daniel Bryan is main eventing every fucking Raw. He's being in high-profile storylines on Raw, probably making tons of money. Amen. But they don't Amen. care about that. Amen. They care about their agenda and what they want on the show. <laughs> Amen. The Chicago crowd is acting exactly like their hero, CM Punk, did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, They're they acting CM like Punk, dicks. If, if you believe all the rumors on the net, CM Punk did not want to be in the match with Triple H because he knew he'd be jobbing. CM Punk then decided to hijack Raw by not showing up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chicago does not want a match with Triple H. So they decide to hijack Raw. It's the which, same thing. Which even to that degree I disagree with because I, I, I don't think – I disagree with he knew that he would be jobbing to Triple H. I think he, he may have believed he would have or he didn't want to. You're but, talking about the, the Brian Triple H match, which – I mean th- that's, that's a different issue. I mean there, there's a reason – the fans are, are are not all on board with the Triple H Daniel Bryan match because it's counterintuitive to everything we've been seeing since SummerSlam. The goal for Daniel Bryan is the championship. The goal is not to get Triple H. That hasn't been the story that's been told. Um, that's a different issue. As far as the fans go, just um, let me ask you a question. Is there a line that you think fans are crossing more often than they did in the past? I'm thinking to that Green Bay crowd the night after Elimination Chamber doing that shitty Husky Harris chant during a Bray Wyatt Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that was the worst. (laughs) Kills me worse than anything. That's crossed the line. What are you trying to accomplish? This that guy should be your guy. And you're doing him no favors. Especially in a period of time with such a peak. A, a, a period of time, too, where there's such a peak in the WWE right now and a peak in professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told people this. I watched WrestleMania 25 on the WWE Network. That was a shit show. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> there was a lot of horrible, horrible shit on that show, uh, including the most boring Triple H Randy Orton main event. And mm-hmm. that show was stacked with shit, but you never heard people do that back then. Yeah. Now I, you have people like Daniel Bryan, Antonio Cesaro, The Shield, The Wyatt family, all these people doing amazing stuff and being progressive and bringing WWE into a progressive era where wrestling can thrive. And this is the era where they shit on everything. I, I want to point out a couple things. First of all, I, I think a few things are happening here as far as some of that and some of the perceptions. Um, there's, especially, I feel like the Bray Wyatt thing might be a thing where. Um, also remember some of the people here. Not everybody's a smart marker in these shows. When maybe somebody recognizes the Husky Harris, maybe somebody's drunk and starts of it. Maybe it's just a unfortunate grouping of drunk and idiot and asshole people. Um, mm-hmm. Like because some people just like kind of shitting on it, you know. And like I forgot who it was, acting, but someone 
Someone mm-hmm. like had a report from like Green Bay where they, they heard people saying like, who is this Cesaro guy and who's this Biggie yeah. Langston yeah. guy? Some people like, go. Some people go and show up just because they know wrestling's in town and maybe don't watch it on a regular basis. I, mm-hmm. I you know, it, it, that happens, and, and there's a lot of people there that aren't into it. So. But also because of, hey, Ring of Honor is on TV and some of this other stuff. And there's enough people, I think, at this time that have been exposed to that indie wrestling crowd mentality and some of the stuff that happens there. People maybe are going back and watching ECW and see how the crowd reacted there. Uh, people are going, you know, look at Ring of Honor in the indies and see how the crowd reacts there. And when you see stuff like the, the whoa, you know, with uh, Daniel Bryan when he's doing the kicks and everything, or, you know, stuff like that. That is, I think, enough people saw his old matches, are bringing it into the mainstream, and then all the people around them, remember, it's a very crowd, you know, mentality, and they just like, oh, this is fun to do. And now that's all mm-hmm. caught on, and now the majority of people that do it now do it because they saw it on TV. Because some people started doing it, it becomes bigger, it becomes bigger, it becomes bigger. <coughs> now I agree everybody wants to be a Ring of Honor crowd, but they don't even know it, right? I, I agree with you. Um, and I wouldn't say Ring of Honor crowd; I'd say indie crowd. I, yeah, but, but I think that's the, the, the that's I the biggest that's the biggest crowd. mainstream example of that. When I say a right. Ring of Honor crowd, just because most um, people were talking but, about a Ring of Honor guys. But Sword if you look at an Sword, indie crowd, or indie you look at like a like a smaller crowd like that, or the stuff that you like, you're saying people saw and want to emulate, it's not a lot of chance that inhibit people's performances. You get as a guy that's been to a lot of indie shows and has worked some indie shows, uh, you get hecklers at indie mm-hmm. shows. But there's maybe like one, two, or three. Right, right. But, but and there are in a minority of the crowd. Remember, everybody wants to be part of the show, one way or another. Whether an asshole, whether they're a mm-hmm. fan, whether anything, everybody wants to be part of the show in some way. Whether they're the one that yells something and John Cena looks and points at them, or they get to catch the shirt, or they get to yell something and get the you know, you know, how many times you know, Mike, Mike, haven't you said going to shows like, hey, I, I started that chant or something like that, right? Like somebody yeah. wants to be the guy that started the asshole chant, you know. Um, and, and, and yeah, you know, not for the good, right reasons and not for anything else, not because they love wrestling or anything, because they want to be, they want to affect something they that happens get, on TV. And I, I hate using this term sometimes, but they want to get themselves over. Yeah, that's it. People want to be part of the show. There was a discussion about, uh, years ago, I was in a discussion with somebody, uh, about indie fans at one of the local groups and they said, yeah, yeah, such and such and such and such, you know, want to become part of the show a little too much and they're crossing the line. It's the you same know. as when you. It's the same as when you heckle a comedian. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You want to make yourself feel important, but to a point, it's encouraged. But there's like that invisible line. Where like, okay, now you're well, being an asshole. Now it, you're in the show. That depends on the comedian. True too. True. That too. depends on the comedian. Like Dave Chappelle was at a show in Connecticut and was heckled so badly he just left. Uh huh. Yeah. But then, but then you're, you're on a wrestling <laughs> program. No, Bobby, you're on a wrestling like program competing in front of fifteen thousand people in a crowd, as well as people on television. You can't do that though. You can't just leave. Mm-hmm. So there yeah. has to be a line. I think that's the key. That's what I said. There has to be a line. But there's no way. There's nobody to enforce the rules. That's the problem right. too. So, so only thing that WWE can do is react, and that's what they're good at, and that's what I think they did last night, and that's mm-hmm. what they were, did not do good at Royal Rumble, and 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 they're not gonna be, you know. WWE does how many hours of programming they're not going to be on all the time as far as doing the right thing, okay? Um, and I love how WWE handled it. Mm-hmm. I think it was great how they handled it. But who's to they say really this manipulated it and next made week? it a part of their a part of the stories that were already existing? I think just my perspective is it is from a point from that fan's perspective where they're trying to get themselves over. It's mm-hmm. not about a certain wrestler but, being underused or under push. To a point, it's because like I hate to say it because I was there. It's because of that post WrestleMania crap. It is. It's because because yeah, it the announcers acknowledged it, mm-hmm. and not even acknowledged it like the, like oh look this is happening. They made it a point to prove how awesome it was. JBL and all three of them stood up and wave to the crowd when their names were being chanted. But yep. again, these were the same people that have uh, taken selfies during shows, so that, that's not... I don't think... They're, they're not doing good <laughs> no. things in general. Hey, let's Those judge things by the announcement, please. Acknowledging it is like <laughs> yeah. feeding the trolls. Um, let's bring this around. I, I think we talked enough about the hijack situation, unless you got some really, really good points you guys want to stick in there real quick. Um, 
but I think we do. We definitely need to make sure we, we put some. <laughs> what, you, are, you guys Jesus okay? Christ. Yeah. You guys okay. You all right? You sure? Points to stick in there. Dick jokes. Oh. Dick jokes. <laughs> yeah, so, Will, what, what would you like to stick in with Roman Reigns? Oh. oh, yeah. Before oh. we get to this other thing, uh, yeah. Wheels, Wheels, you posted something really, yeah. really interesting <laughs> on Facebook. I did. Like, I did. And all I got to say is I technically <laughs> did not post that. I just said something. It's out okay. loud. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's you okay. It's okay. No, no, no. We, we don't think any less loud. of you. 14. No, we no. Love you. Let me explain it. I said it out loud. And I let somebody type it on my Facebook. <laughs> so I was okay with the statement I said. And boy, did it get out of hand. And what was your <laughs> statement, sir? I said if I was gay, I'd fuck the shit out of Roman Reigns. That's not all. Continue That's the all. statement. <laughs> Continue the, the statement. Whole statement, please, sir. Go on. <laughs> Verbatim. <laughs> Verbatim this, Riz. <laughs> I believe there was some hair pulling involved. Okay, that was not me. Somebody added <laughs> that part. Mm, I no, just said I'd fuck man. Roman Reigns. I don't know if I believe that. up to this. Uh, don't up to it all the way. Come on. <clears throat> I pull that <laughs> long flowing no hair until the sure. cows come home. <laughs> Repeat after me. My statements were taken out of context. My statements it, were taken out of context. There is no context. It was your Facebook page. <laughs> I will listen to my attorney, attorney Matt Carlins. He shall speak for me. I just wish he had a better connection wheels, to speak talk, for you. Wheels, just oh, talk wheels. about how you got hacked. <laughs> yeah. Wheels, wheels. It's okay. Sorry, guys. My account got hacked. Oh, no, sorry okay. about that. Okay. Wheels, your sorry, attorney okay. is a reporter. You're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. okay. We all have our one heterosexual man crush. Honestly, I it. agree. And that's what it is. It's like I'm okay with my sexuality to say that that is a handsome man. It, it, it is a handsome man. I'm not, I'm not gonna okay. lie. He, yeah. He is yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's be honest. I've Roman seen, Reigns I've makes most out. of us probably straight guys here a little moist. Let's let's just admit I've, to that I've, and move I've on. I've seen the cutout, and it Sorg, moved you get moist just a little bit for me. <laughs> Sorg, we need Sorg, to have a talk about your part. Yeah. Yeah. If There's you're just worst, getting man. moist, then something's a mess. Stop saying that word. <laughs> moist. <laughs> Let's talk about NXT, guys. NXT hey, arrival hey, happened. Speaking of yay. things that made people in this, this chat like, moist. Stop oh, it. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that moist-making main of the, the opening show. 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 Shoes moist. Between <laughs> Sammy Zane, <laughs> Sammy Zayn and uh, Cesaro. The only thing oh, that should God, be moist is a nice awesome. piece of cake. <laughs> 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 Bobby, Bobby, <laughs> Bobby, happy, happy, pleasantly plump Tuesday. Happy, pleasantly plump Tuesday, everybody. Yes. And see. And see. <laughs> and see. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, NXT. No. NXT arrival. The NXT. Universe. They have arrived. They yep. have arrived. They have. I, I want to I wanna make a, a public statement. Hmm. Oh, no. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh -oh. Come on. You were right. Thank you, buddy. Eamon was right. Uh, Eamon that was happens right. sometimes. Eamon? Eamon? Time to time. I would, I would the, also like the to The Cesaro match was amazing, and I'm on board with Paige and even Emma now. Mm -hmm. It's good, funny how she can but wrestle. Still, but still, yeah. fuck your that face over That would be Raleigh. intolerable if she couldn't wrestle. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I think people don't get the perspective of the Emma gimmick is that she's a she, her gimmick is that she's self-centered. Like she, she thinks she's like. hot shit, and she thinks she's the greatest dancer in the world, and is gonna lead the evolution, and that she's just the best. Mm -hmm. So um, there's com there's it's complexity. It's not just like this is a dance. Like it's it's because of reasons. But the it's great. Thing no, I and, I, and that NXT arrival show is awesome. I watched it back like a few days after, and it it holds up. It's just as good. Mm -hmm. um, I the Suzanne, the Sami Zayn Cesaro. I said it in our after show that we did, um, but 
there has been no better feud, feud, I think, this year than Sami Zayn versus Antonio Cesaro as far as how it was booked and how um, everything made sense and played off of previous matches and came together. I think it was perfect. It was mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. perfect. I agree. I agree completely. Um, but it, still, fuck both of you. Well, sword girl on my side. Fuck you, Eamon, for uh, Mojo Raleigh. I, I didn't not make see Mojo Raleigh. Again. I am... <laughs> I, I, I will say one thing about NXT. Arrival was very good. Mm-hmm. I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it's a good show until I watch back-to-back one-hour like actual shows of it. Because Arrival, okay. was sort of, Arrival was sort of like a pay-per-view. Yeah. like I watched the three episodes that were on the network, and some of it was good. Parts of it was... Very, very meh. Mm-hmm. So, and it's I'm a div- going to- but that's the thing. I think there's great in it, and people need to recognize that it's a developmental league. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, like people are learning as they're going. There's so a lot of get trying. To see, but it's the all- point, the that's the benefit of NXT is you see people grow from when they mm-hmm. sucked mm-hmm. to when they started to get good and started to develop. And you see a I'd lot also more like risk. To point taking. out the fact that sorry, sort you go. I, you say there, and there's a lot more <laughs> risk taking too. Um, mm-hmm. we, we talked about like with ECW or maybe even like SmackDown back there, I felt like they were trying new and different things or some of these younger guys that weren't getting over on the main show were doing interesting experimental stuff on you on tout that we were loving, like the Derek Bateman stuff, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and, and NXT is where that happens. And you're going to see stuff that you don't see on Raw, but you're also going to see stuff that doesn't work. But, yeah. but that's, that's really is, I think I, I agree with him as part of the fun of it. Uh, now LB, what, what were you saying uh i i wanted to mention that uh mad mike yes you were saying you know you're you'll be able to draw a better conclusion once you see them like back to back hour shows week in week (coughs) out but the fact of the matter is you are going to watch those hour shows so Mm -hmm. the pay-per-view completely accomplished what you set out to do do you notice what's on thursday nights Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm It's gonna be We're really so gonna get. Stunned. I think if you look at the We're ratio so between those two shows, the winner is obviously clear. No, no, and they're, See, Amon, and they're Amon, both Amon, uh, at Amon, nine o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Amen. No, I see. You said this on the Thursday hangout too, and I absolutely disagree. Okay. I don't think you can categorically say NXT is going to be a better show because one, they're working with one hour as opposed to two. Yeah. So. They can afford. They can afford to try and limit the roster of who they have on the show and have like a twenty minute match. Okay. Two. They have a better production team behind them. I, wait, 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 just because it's taking place at Full Sail University. The students are the one that's putting does, it together. But that does not mean that WWE is not watching every single fucking thing that they are doing. This is true. Like and this making is sure this is what they want. Right. I mean it's the, an internship project. Yeah. It, yeah. They have a boss. It's not like full sale students are just like, ooh, I want there to be randomly lasers when the ascension comes out. No. WWE said Hey, we're gonna have some lasers for when the ascension comes out. All right, like it's yeah, a it's, project for them. It's still college kids, though. But, but okay, we can't. So you so, can't compare. So it. Wait, no, 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 no. Hold on, no, 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 no. You WWE can't compare a WWE produced product to something that TNA is doing. So why do? Why does everyone else do that? With yeah. Raw and Impact. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's true. This is true. And and this is a lower end. This is an admittedly lower end production for WWE. That is a small arena. That is probably smaller than the Impact Zone. Maybe. Probably. Probably. As evidenced say, by the I fact that so. they oversold by many hundreds <coughs> of tickets. Yeah. But yeah. the reason for that is because they always over they always oversell that place because a lot of the people who have free tickets do not show up. Okay. Okay. okay, but that I, I know I know a guy in Florida that it's a small NXT arena. <laughs> He's yeah. told me that like full sales full sale students get in for free if they want, so mm-hmm. they almost always sell out because students get in for free if they don't have anything to do on a Friday night or whenever they go see a wrestling show for an hour. 
So it's one of those things where, like, it's kind of like the Impact Zone and kind of not. Yeah, yeah. And the weird thing is, now you mentioned that, the I, I mentioned this during the show and during the pre-show and during the after show. There were, there were like, mainstays from the uh, Impact Zone that were in the front row of the NXT show. It's the same mm-hmm. town. It is the same town. It's the same town, the same guys, and everything like that. And there were, well, there same was, it was noticeable. It's the same town. Oh, they're pretty close similar. to the same town. Yeah. Yeah, pretty close. They're, yeah. They're, but they're still, it was an hour of each other. But within still, an hour it was so other. weird seeing, like, it, it looked like they just put all of the fans that were used to be in, uh, in a, in the impact zone and just moved him over the full sale mm-hmm. and just <laughs> but, sat but, them down and, and said, actually some watch of the good wrestling. Too, Cal Val was but there. notice, yeah, notice how, how so much more energy there was in that building than in the Amen. impact zone. Amen. 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 Do you wait want to know the reason minute. for no, that? No, no, no. Don't argue with Amen. What were you going to say about SoCal Val? I must know. <laughs> she, was, she was in the crowd. SoCal Val was behind John Cena at Arrival. What? Yes, she, I yes, have to was. go watch this now. Again, right now. <laughs> okay. Wrap, um, Sork, wrap up now, the show. I have to go watch uh, NXT. Um, um, what did you I learn? We don't make, care. May him out. What? I want to make time. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you learn? We don't care. Hashtag. 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 My, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on anymore. Amen. Okay. No, no, no. no. <laughs> hold, hold on. My headphones. Mad Mike, say your thing. Okay. Eamon, the reason yes. that there was so much energy in that crowd, NXT has only been there for maybe about two years. Impact Impact was in the Impact Zone for close to ten. That it's crowd got exhausted. Product, that, 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 that is, is not, not a good reason. That's not a good reason. He's been there. That is not a good reason. Whoa, 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 whoa. Guys, 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 guys. Okay. This is not okay. the Monday right. night hangout. Relax. Amen. One Amen. at a time. No, no, One no, at a no. time. Stop. Let's let's chill. Let finish, please. Chill. Lusa. If you see yeah. the same people same week people. in and yeah. week out yes. for 10 years, you are going to get tired of it, regardless of how much effort the people put into the show. You are going to become lethargic to it because you've seen every possible matchup they can throw at us. Chill. <laughs> The ECW Arena did it, and they did like the same matches constantly. The ECW Arena did not run every week. They went to many different cities. You did the CMA! Everybody, both of you, stop now. We cannot. The the hashtag is same old shit. You two arguing cannot be every episode. <laughs> I haven't Please. been on for like months. We've already established Sorry. this. I went to go get I'm food. Sorry. Let listen, listen, Sorry. listen. That's enough about NXT. You guys can Sorry. carry on your own thing. Nobody is calling my name right now because I am Sorry. in fun glasses Sorry. land. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. I want to talk about WWE Network because yeah. I know you guys have been watching some stuff. You guys have been re-experiencing or experiencing stuff that you haven't. I've been watching with my 3D glasses, even though stuff is barely 2D in the old days. Um, I, I want to know what, you, like, what interesting stuff has happened, Mike. I know you. I uh, mentioned about you can play pretty much with half of it, like uh, a, a, a dead or retired. Uh, yeah, it's a fun. It's a fun game. I always used to like to play with Royal Rumbles, and now I can play it with World War Three. Yes. And yes. holy crap, if you want to watch a big-ass battle royal where you can't see anything happening, watch World War Three. I watched this one. I, I watched the first one because I watched the later ones back when they were on. Um, and, yeah, it would, there's three announced teams. There's three rings. There's 60 people. <laughs> I, I'd be okay with it if they actually, like... Because the, the screen setup was... They had two screens on top, one screen on the bottom in the middle. Yeah. If they kept, like, screen one to be ring one, screen two to be ring two, and the bottom screen to be ring three, that'd be fine. You can follow the action there. But I was watching intently. They switch the cameras all the time. Oh, no. So if you try to keep track of something, like, I was just trying to keep track of one person 
just to see if I could. That one person is Hulk Hogan. <laughs> You think the camera would be on him a lot, right? And it was the worst ending ever. The first World War Three. Oh my god! He got pulled underneath the rope, and the ref thought he went over the rope. Therefore, Macho Man Randy Savage is the heavyweight champion. Yep. What? <laughs> it was. It was weird. Macho wins. There are lots of interviews. I also found myself on one pay per view where the Hogan big surprise. Aaron, WCW. The big surprise was the Renegade, who was dressed like the Ultimate Warrior. That was very interesting. <laughs> um... <laughs> I, 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 you know, what, what, what other guy? What, what discoveries have you guys made on the network so far? Uh, I watched was, Russell War ninety two. <laughs> we talked about that one. <laughs> Big Josh, Big Josh, earring with his uh, jean shorts. Oh, oh, um, I got one. I got one. I got one. The old ECW fucking sucks. <laughs> that is specifically. But to be fair, to be fair though, it was it, it's East Coast Championship. East Coast East Champions, Eastern, 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 Eastern Coast Champions Championship Wrestling. Wrestling. Yes, whatever it is, and it was horrible. It was, here, I've been, been watching it. Spot on Joey Styles impersonation from the very earliest days of Eastern Championship Wrestling. You mean you mean when he just like looks at the camera with his hand motions and his giant ball right in front of his face mm-hmm. and his giant glasses? Hey, that's how the microphones were back then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually got to see one of the the first pay per view I ever went to, Hardcore Heaven '99, in the Mid Hudson Civic Center. Because I had never seen the actual broadcast of it, so I got to watch it with commentary. And they showed where Joey Styles was commentating from. He was in a curtained-off section right next to the bathrooms. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just thought it was very funny because I know that arena. I knew exactly where he was commentating <laughs> from based on the view he had of the arena. And, yeah, it was right next to the bathroom. So if you went to the bathroom during Parkour Heaven 99, you probably walked right past Joey Styles. Man, that had to have been a smelly situation over there. <laughs> it's uh, it's not a revelation, but I finally got to revisit my uh, my precious Halloween havoc. Uh, I don't know if it was ninety or or ninety one uh, with the uh, Chamber of Horrors match. Holy shit! So much worse than I remember. <laughs> Just Isn't terrible. that the one where they, they tried were... pulling the lever to electrocute and it didn't work? Yeah, and well, then they eventually they kill the, Abdul um... the butcher. <laughs> <laughs> they mentioned that on the, Kill him. On the worst wrestlers, uh, the worst wrestlers uh, roundtable. Yeah. yeah, the legend and, uh, thing. And they said the lever went down before it was supposed to go down. Yes. And they caught it on video. Yep. Uh-huh. And then Mick Foley put the thing, put the lever back up, and it was caught on video. And yeah. then he <laughs> pulled the lever back down. It's they didn't terrible. have it back then. <laughs> Other other highlights of that match oh. were random coffins in the cage that had random masked wrestlers that weren't part of the match. They would just <laughs> pop out and get beaten up. Um, the uh, at at one point randomly the uh, the electric chair descends, and uh, I think Cactus Jack almost gets crushed under it. Yeah, <laughs> they showed that they showed that my, on that round table too. Yeah, and my favorite part is the referee which was right. a camera that the referees wore on their fucking heads. <laughs> Google Glass! Google Glass! <laughs> Get right here. No good. There you go. Like this? Was, did it look like this? Nope. No, like it looked so much on worse. <laughs> so, so Impact wasn't the first one to try this then? Nope, no, it was the first TNA. WCW. It was the original TNA. So so basically, most of what oh. all of us have done is, is go back and revisit like some old stuff to realize mm. how fucking worse wrestling was than it is today. I, yeah. I uh, well, I will that. say, um, I, I would seek out uh, Wrestle War '92 solely for the War Games match between Sting Squadron and uh, the Dangerous Alliance because mm-hmm. that's a really good match. Uh, going to that point of like wrestling used to be so bad back then. Uh, I watched also Fully Loaded 2000. Um, oh. Holy shit, was wrestling super unsafe? Yeah. Oh yeah, then. completely. Yeah. I even oh, watched yeah. the first like, episode of SmackDown. In 2000. Yeah, it, it I was watched really uh, Triple H versus Chris Jericho in a last man standing match where Triple H blades and immediately just starts bleeding everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. they don't clean up the blood at all and they go straight into Rock Benoit and they're like rolling around in the blood and yeah, Rock cuts himself and is rolling around in that blood. <laughs> and it was super unsafe. 
<laughs> Please, wrestling, don't ever be that unsafe ever again. I, I've been actually going like, through the nineties. I've been going through the first few episodes of Raw. So that's been fun because it's it's the lead How up. How many and times then, have you seen a young me sork? Are you? Oh, so you're all over that, huh? I uh, in the I don't I haven't seen me in the ones I've watched, but mm -hmm. anything that's at the Mid Hudson Civic Center. Oh you, no, we're not be, that far. Be, we're still at the Manhattan Center. Okay. Well, when you start to get to the Civic Center, you be on the lookout because they, I I was pretty much at every Raw tape. They um, don't even show. have the first 10 episodes up. So, um, But, yeah, it's like the lead-up to WrestleMania 9 and then the after. It's been pretty interesting. They had some guy that was a DJ in New York that was on Imus's channel or something. <laughs> He's so fucking horrible. Rob he, Bartlett. Rob Bartlett, yeah. Fuck yeah. that guy. I am so... Oh, Rob Bartlett was the shit. Oh, I hate him. He does one episode where he pretends to be Vince the whole time. Yeah. It's horrible. It's it's rough. This this is <laughs> this is some rough stuff. Um, other than that, it, it, yeah, it's been a blast so far, and I, I have a feeling we're going to do a lot of what did you learn from WWE Network this week alone. Um, so I I watched I watched a few pay per views and stuff already. Yeah, and um. Four out of the five I've watched, garbage has been thrown into the ring <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> randomly. Um, and one really cool thing happened to me this week. Um, I watched Living Dangerously 98, I believe it was. And um, I, I witnessed the um, Lance Storm and Al Snow versus Shane Douglas and um, Chris Candido and all the styrofoam heads getting thrown into the ring. Um, I actually – tweeted at Lance Storm and I was like, what was it like to have all those styrofoam heads come flying into the ring? And he was like, he, and he tweeted back at me and he said, it was crazy how overhead was. <laughs> so I, was like, I was like, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's like, yeah, he's, he's pretty active on Twitter. So mm -hmm. that's, that's great. So, all right guys, I, I feel like we've already done a, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Um, but we'll do round the horn kiss. You guys got something else. Uh, I, I Wheels. What did you learn? I uh, honestly, I've learned I really, really enjoy the WWE Network so much. I mean, I can't wait to turn on the Xbox and actually watch it on the TV instead of the tablet and yeah. the laptop. Awesome. Uh, what about you, Riz? I learned that everybody is all upset about, you know, the Xbox uh, WWE Network not working. <laughs> <clears throat> and I just kept saying, mine keeps working. Fuck all of you. <laughs> Good I still player. say that now because now they you guys it, have man. it. But now I think you guys are going to get the uh, discount now. So, damn it, a five dollar <laughs> discount. <laughs> yeah, we got our five bucks to spend. What about you, Matt? I learned that thanks to the WWE Network, now every night is a war. We had the Thursday night war between NXT and TNA, and tonight we had the Tuesday night war between main event and. Whatever the heck Sorgatron Media was rolling out there while I was watching the main event. <laughs> that would be awesome let's cast. Play, uh, uh, let's play, too. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, that's right. Next that was week awesome. it'll be, no, it was awesome cast. Next week it'll be boss battle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, what about you there? Uh, but no, I think I got Riz. Uh, what about you, Eamon? They already got me. Or Eamon. LB. LB? I learned from wrestling this week. I realize my mic is good. Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that hell can freeze over because I like something that the road dog did. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't do the oh, he didn't do the catchphrase thing because he said Chicago didn't deserve it, and he acted like an actual heel. And I appreciate that, road dog. Thank you very much. Don't, don't watch now. Me go back to doing whatever road dog does. Yeah, don't watch NX or don't watch my event this week. Main event was know, good. Right? No, but he was very rude to Renee Young. Aww. Uh, well, they always. In I all fairness, but he should be rude, rude, rude to Renee Young because they're heels. I miss that Mystery also, Science Theater show also, he used to do with uh, Josh Matthews. And the also, puppies. I posted on the Facebook group a, a promo from, I think, a few months ago from Main Event with Fandango being mean to Renee <laughs> Young. Yes. It is the greatest promo of all time. You're not even a real journalism. <laughs> Hashtag Funkadoodles. <laughs> <laughs> LB, what about you? Uh, I learned, alongside my dear friend Daniel Bryan, that it turns out Stephanie and Triple H do own the rings in <laughs> WWE. I don't know who he thought owned them, but uh, 
Learn something new every day. We actually have owned a piece of it, I think. Like we we, we <laughs> own yeah, stock in, in, in yeah, like we mm. we own capital in the ring. Maybe he and, thought all those guys in black shirts who put it together at the beginning of each show owned it. I don't know where he's getting his information, but uh, that's what I learned. Sorg, what did you learn? Oh, crap, I wasn't ready for that. Uh, I learned. Um, Wait, who who's left? I the, the, isn't there. You missed the whole hang. I mean, there's yeah. a whole hangout. I was going with the other hangout first, so I wasn't prepared. Go for the other hangout, uh, Bobby. Sorg, Sorg, Bobby, who else your face is there. What they I, have learned. <laughs> My face appears. Wow, Bobby appears. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I learned. I learned that um, the Berserker, um, at, shortly after his career was over, he retired. He became a car salesman at his brother's uh, automobile uh, place of business, and then after that, he became a factory worker at Huggies, making diapers. Huggies. <laughs> yes. Like the drink? No, the diapers. So uh, he makes diapers. Hugs, 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 yeah. hugs, hugs. And 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 technically, um, Skinner created NXT. So, which is <laughs> kind of yeah. almost true. Ninety-two Rumble. <laughs> that almost. <laughs> uh, what about you, yeah. Mike? Oh, I learned so much this week. Um, I, I learned that the TNA. Has just decided to not do title changes on their shows anymore, but they'll do them on house shows. Um, I, I learned I need to read all of Battle Mania, and I, yes, I learned most importantly that I'm not even a journalist. <laughs> Uh, of course, I learned um, that after watching Survivor Series '88, uh, how right Jesse Ventura is about everything. Yes, <laughs> I mean, I mean, yes. he wasn't wrong. He just didn't it's like the good guys, sure. but he wasn't I'm wrong. wrong. But he was always I mean, fair. I mean, he I was, was always pissed. fair. I was pissed about the Killer Beast thing too with the mask. So I always fear what I'm talking they about at all times. They were another beams. another good thing from Wrestle War ninety two, uh Marcus Alexander Bagwell has a match and he does his comeback and goes to like hit his finisher and then he turns to the crowd and is like, Yeah, do you want me to do it? And the crowd cheers and Jesse loses it. And he's like, Why would he do that? Why would he look to the crowd for their approval? What if they said no? <laughs> <laughs> And it's the reason why I love Jesse Ventura so much. I don't care if he's yeah. fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. I want 1992 Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura time. predicted that no would be a chant all the way back then. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Guys, um, thank you for joining us. The Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can join us here live Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Or just go to wrestlingmayhemshow.com and uh, click the link over there. Uh, you can find us uh, audio and video on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Roku, Blip TV, all kinds of places. You can also drop us a line at the email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. Um, you can also find us at Mayhem Show on Twitter, on Google+, on Facebook, especially the Facebook Wrestling Mayhem Show group. Join us there. A lot of our discussions happening. Um, and also, thanks a lot to Mike Allen, at Mike Allen PR, for doing the show notes and the live tweets of this show. Uh, go follow him. Check him out. Uh, thanks a lot for all the help that he's uh, been giving us there. Um, and with that, guys, we'll see you next week. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.